Hello and welcome back to West End Best Friend and today we are joined by a very special guest from the cast of Fisherman's Friends, the UK tour. It's James Gaddis. Welcome to West End Best Friend. How's it going? Hiya. Nice to meet you. We're tired. You know, it's been a it's been a heavy three weeks. You know, we're in Plymouth. Yeah. Um, it's the first leg of the tour and mm -hmm. it's been relentless rehearsing with wonderful outcomes. The audiences have been absolutely terrific. So, yeah. Yeah, I imagine it's a it's a wonderful show that really kind of connects with audiences and it's just it a lovely kind of atmosphere around it. So it makes it yeah. worth going through all those rehearsals, right? I think it does because it's without question the most heartfelt show I've ever been in. You want to go and hug everybody in the cast constantly. We're all looking around at each other going, this is really strange. And in, I think in this day and age when we've got so much going on with COVID and war in Ukraine and all of these things. Yeah. It's really, really uplifting. It's a show that you, everybody can come and see, you know, and I'm yeah. thoroughly enjoying it. I'm glad to hear that. And, and it, we need so many shows like this right now, especially as yeah. you say, when, when things are really difficult, we need a show where we could just go and be Definitely. cheered up and leave Enjoy feeling yourself. uplifted. Yeah. Exactly. So for people who maybe haven't seen the film that this based off or the tr know the true story that it's based on, could you bring us all up to speed? What is Fisherman's Friends about? Fisherman's Friends is about, as it's built, the world's most unlikely boy band. And basically it's a group of, of shanty singers called the Fisherman's Friends yeah. who sing to this day every Friday night in Port Isaac, a small uh, village in Cornwall. Yeah. Um, and they sing on the plat, which is where the boats come up, and they sing shanties, and they've been doing that for 20 odd years. Brilliant. And Johnny Walker, the radio host, was down in Port Isaac, saw them, suggested his manager come down and have a look. Uh, he came down, signed them up to a record label, and they've now toured the world and played the Glastonbury Pyramid stage. And it is the sort of thing where you think, if you made it into a film, well, they did make it into a film, but you kind of look at Hollywood producing it, no, that's not going to work. No, you know, it's that kind of thing. So, yeah, it, but it's absolutely true. And, you know, we've, we've met uh, a couple of Fisherman's friends. That they're all coming uh, tomorrow night to the, uh, the actual official opening night. Great. And that's what they do, you know, and it's, it's, it's about their community. That's, that's what it is. They're friends first. I can remind them the show, friends first, singing second. That's what they're Fantastic. That sounds so lovely. And again, it's, it's great to have like such a, a lot of attention on this and like a, a small band that started in a in a lovely community and now they've gotten all this attention. It proves that it really can happen, can't it? Like the dream can come it, true. It can. Yeah. I, you know, it, it really is the equivalent of somebody calling me tomorrow and saying play the, you know, the um, prime ballet dancer at the Royal Ballet. Never going to happen you think what yeah. happened for them yeah. so you know it, it's it, it can happen dreams can come true buy your lottery tickets yeah because it gives you faith that it can happen it Absolutely. definitely can so as you say you're currently in plymouth you're about to open the first leg of the tour properly setting yeah. off setting sail across the country setting sail across the country how many times have you heard that one <laughs> uh yeah i'm not i'm good do you know it's the first time Helen. yeah it's really it's actually, nobody's actually said that in an interview yet, selling, selling sail across the country. So there we there go. You go. You find it now, whenever anybody does, I'll say you're doing a calamism. Amazing. I, I was writing that and I think, how many times must he have heard this used in a phrase? Anyway, so you're, you're, <laughs> you're about yeah. to set, set sail across the country uh, to places including Birmingham. You'll be in Birmingham from the 13th to the 17th of September. How, yeah. how excited are you to be coming to Birmingham as as well as I, all the other places across the country? I love Birmingham. I've played there in Spamalot, uh, this house. And it's a really, it's a great city for audiences, you know? Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they you, you, You're coming in and you're you're swept away in it and you, you can clap, you can sing along, you know. It's it's a phenomenal piece of theatre. And yeah. you know, we, we get to pull ropes work. But I, I can actually fix a fishing net now. I can oh, fix wow. a fishing net. <laughs> I've got a scene where I fix a fishing net, so I watch YouTube videos. And yeah. at the end I want to come off and I'm, you know, and instead of coming off and going, well, you know, that, that song went well and everything. So I'm showing people my net, you know. <laughs> Fantastic. 
And I wanted to ask as well, with this being based on a true story, you, you're not just playing someone who like used to exist in history, you're playing someone who, who does exist. Like these well, people are a real band currently. How does this that- This is a real band. It's, we're not specific members of the band. You know, All right. The, the band tend to identify with different people, different yeah. elements. So, you know, you can see elements of yourself in each of them, yeah. which, is, which is great fun. And they see elements of us in, in them as well. You know? Yeah. There's something about that connection between everybody who was singing, you know, especially the a cappella numbers. We, uh, we have the a cappella numbers, we have the most incredible actor musicians who are playing fiddles, banjos, guitars, drums. Our drummer, Louisa, she dashes all over with all of these different instruments. She even has an instrument that's like a box that she sits on that's got like uh, sort of acoustics inside so she can play along and drum along. Right. And I'm in all. I mean, I'm in all. <laughs> so, so what's it like being a part of this band that, that does exist? You say they're coming to see the show very soon. Do you yeah. feel any kind of extra pressure if if they're in the audience, or, do, or are you just looking forward? I think, to you'll, it? I think you'll always. I think you'll always feel pressure. You know, I did yeah. the girls a couple of years ago, which was the Calendar Girls musical, and I played John, who died of cancer. And, you know, set the set that off, and the family came. I played Walter Harrison in this house. And on the opening night, his family came. He was the Labour Chief Whip, uh, Deputy Chief Whip. His yeah. family came. So of course you feel a, a, a slight pressure. But having met the band, you know, they are just so full of life and mischief. Have they offered any insight or any tips for you to keep in mind when you're performing or, or just no, they're, your they're environment? terrific. They're terrific with that. They let, you know, our musical arrangers do that. They just give. They've, you know, the, the manager's been in, uh, John Cleave has been in, who's one of the lead singers, um, has an incredible moustache. And they fill us in on the background of Port Isaac and what it's like to sing there, what it's like to be there. Because these guys are not, you know, they haven't given up being who they are. Yeah. They live in Port Isaac, they still live there, they still do their day jobs when they're not touring, you know. So it's, really? it's that's why somebody asked me in another interview, can you relate to them? You absolutely 100% can relate. You can't relate to Beyonce, Justin Bieber, people like this, because they live on an, another kind of planet. Yeah. But these guys are, if you go down to Port Isaac, you'll meet them. You know, we were there the other day, a couple of us went down, and uh, we were in the ice cream shop, and I said, John Cleve lives there. Cleve, yeah, he lives down uh, there. They all know each other, they're still there. And it's wonderful to know that, that these people who have had such good success remains so grounded and that must add kind of an extra layer to potentially your performances there's no there's no private jets you know there's none of that you know and it's yeah and the only difference john was saying is that now whenever they start suddenly there's there's a couple of hundred people because you know it's the middle of summer and a lot of tourists around because doc martin is from there as well so there's an awful lot yeah. of tourists and now suddenly they're coming down because the fisherman's friends are performing you know and they love performing and it's it's infectious when we get on the stage and do it it's like i say you know, i've done Billy Elliot's, i've done the girls i've done spam a lot of money, all these kind of things yeah there's none of them are as infectious as this you know when you're actually up there performing it's incredible that's wonderful to hear and now it is as as we've said it's about a community kind of coming together through music and through being able to celebrate the success of this yeah. homegrown band and like in your in your own words kind of I, I, we've we've kind of alluded to it already but how important is these kind of stories about communities being able to come together through music especially right now i think i think the show would would hold up anyway i think on the top of i think you've hit the nail on the head on the top of all that's been going on with COVID and watching war in Ukraine and everything, it really does feel like you want to put your arms around, you know, the country. That sounds naff, but it really does feel that way. It's the opportunity to say, come along to the theatre, join in, you know, with this feeling that is in there with the music, because people relating to the sort of music that's there, come out, have a good time, you know, come to the stage door afterwards, have a chat with us, all of these things, we're yeah. there. And it, it, it is, it's the kind of musical that the country needs. We, we had it with Come From Away, you know, yeah. uh, a couple of years ago when, when that came up. And it's that kind of thing, it's that, it, it's not just a feel good factor. It's, we say in, we say in the show, it's about uh, truth, respect, community. And 
the emphasis on community. Yeah, that sounds it sounds so lovely. Like honestly, it's making me just smile. I can't wait to see the show. I just wanted to ask for you personally. Do you have any examples kind of in your own life where music has kind of touched you or, or your community and or brought you together with people at all? It's got in different ways. I think in very much different ways. Music, it can also be, you know, for me, the most poignant thing for me is I can't listen to Dance With My Father again after my right. father passed away. Anytime it comes on the radio, I have to turn it off. So music can have so many different feelings for people. With this specific musical, it's just completely uplifting. Music in this is even the, you know, the slightly sadder elements of the show are still uplifting because the whole community is behind it. I'm trying not to give too much away, and you'll see that when you know when you see the show. My wife has always loved music. I've kind of always been just stuck in the 80s electro. But <laughs> I'm kind of yeah, you can know. I'm spreading my wings a bit now. You know, that's that's the main thing. I'm listening to, you know, much more uh, sort of eclectic music. I can't knock the 80s music. The 80s music is a, a solid era it's like, of music. It's iconic, totally. Iconic. <laughs> Cannot yeah, knock it at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's great to hear. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And thank you for kind of taking the time to chat to us, West End Best Friend, about your show. <laughs> and what a wonderful note to end this interview on. Thank you very much, James, for coming to chat Pleasure. to us. I'm very excited about Fisherman's Friends and good luck as you set sail across the country. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.